Hi guys, welcome to Log Cabin Gaming. Uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to paint this little guy here. Um, it's more really to how I paint my yellow armour uh, quickly and easily. Uh, when I first started collecting the iron jaws, uh, I found it a real struggle to paint with uh, the yellow. Uh, so I figured there's probably quite a lot of other people out there and my kind of searches online lent me to find these really advanced painters uh, <laughs> with egg, uh, um, airbrushes spraying, you must have seen them, spraying the models pink first uh, and then getting a really lovely kind of uh, effect at the end but it was just too much, it was too, I, th I think it's beyond my current ability so I kind of came out with a way uh, to, to paint yellow quickly and easily um, for those who follow the channel you'll know I'm more of a gamer than a painter um, but I do like the models to look uh, reasonably good so if there's a way to, to make them look pretty good quickly then I will go down that route so hopefully this is a useful tutorial for you on how I paint my yellow it's honestly it's so easy like this 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 video could be one minute long but um it's basically three steps paint a base coat of yellow do some edge highlight and then do the magic wash at the end um so if you're here just to see how i do my yellow it's literally spray paint the model in wraith bone um then <laughs> paint it in flash gets yellow edge highlight it in dawn yellow uh, and then do a magic wash over the end, uh, which I'll put a link to um, in the description uh, to, to jump you straight to how I mix my, my um, yellow wash. Uh, but for those who want to see how I paint the brute itself, uh, there's a bit of a tutorial for you, um, which we will start right now. Catch you in a bit. <laughs> So I've primed these guys in uh, Wraith Bone, which is the recommended uh, primer for, for contrast, but you can use Corex White uh, if that's what you've got. We're not going to be using too much contrast, so it's not going to make that much of a dis difference. Um, as you can see, I've, I've um, left the, shield, uh, the, kind of the front guard, the chest guard off, just for ease of uh, painting, uh, so we can get to all the bits. And um, I've also, if I haven't mentioned it before, given him a uh, double armed or a double weaponed um, pose so he's very open. So his chest, everything down the middle is very open and not uh, and exposed so we can get to anything that we want to apart from the chest plate. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take some flash gets yellow, uh, thin down with some water and with a small base brush I'm just going to paint all the armor panels that I want to be yellow. Now you're gonna to have to make a decision on um, what what armor panels you want yellow and what you want to be black. Um, you don't have to be too careful with this because most of the colors we're using are going to be Citadel base colors after, so they will go over the so they will go over the yellow <clears throat> um, if you splash on them. The only bits where you need to be careful um, is because I'm planning to use the black contrast on the shoulder pads. We kind of want to be careful over there. Um, we don't want to spill too much on there. It doesn't matter if we do because we can always neaten it up. But the less neatening we have to do, the better. So I'm just going to do this all over the model. Um, where I want the yellow armor panels to be and because we're going to go over it with a glaze later on I'm not too fussed about having two thin coats um, I'm going to have one thin coat really it doesn't matter if it's a little bit see-through uh, because the glaze will cover any imperfections uh, You does this model have it? no this model doesn't have it but some of them have got um kind of like divots in there like a bit of a trim that you might want to paint in yellow as well so if you just get your small brush I'm going to paint this middle chest bit here black so I'm just going to paint that yellow there he is with all the uh, yellow armor panels done 
So you can see where I've left uh, them to be painted black, namely here and there, and I've left that front one there to be painted black. Next step is we're going to get Deathwell Forest and thin it down with a bit of water, and I've got a medium layer brush here, and we're just going to paint all the skin. Again, you don't have to be too uh, careful with this, but don't get any on the yellow that we've just painted. And again, don't um, if you can avoid getting it on the black armor panels uh, where we're going to apply the contrast, and that's probably going to be good. I find Death World Forest to be um, quite a thin paint, so you're definitely going to need two thin coats. Now that the green's all dry, we're going to do the next step, which is Black Templar, which is a contrast paint. So we're going to give it a very thorough shake, as you should do with all contrast paints. I've been shaking this before anyway. So what we're going to do from here is straight out the pot. I'm going to actually put a bit on the palette first, because I don't want it to be too thick, because these armour panels here, they're very nice and edged, and what will happen is as it dries you'll start to see um, it naturally highlighting the the creases the folds in the metal it's a it's a very nice orky feature um, so I'm going to do this for all the panels that we've left in the wraith bone which hopefully you didn't get any yellow on it's not too bad with the with the black and then I am going to paint anything that I want to be metal, so the weapons and any chainmail armour. Um, I'll probably paint it in a bad and black, but for, for speed, there's no reason why you can't paint it in Black Templar. I've done it in both, and personal preference, I think I prefer a bad and black um, to dry brush lead belcher over. Okay, so I'm just going to do this for all the model, and then we'll be back. So the black's now dry, and uh, hopefully you can see that we've got some kind of natural highlights to the uh, to the beaten armor panels. Um, I have got a little knife here. I say it's little; it's probably quite big. Um, that, that's going to fit here. So I've done that with uh, with black as well, a bad and black. Next step we're going to do is we're going to get some lead belcher, and we're going to dry brush all the metal bits and the reason why we're doing it now is because if we spill onto um, any of the other colors it's fine we can we can base coat it um, afterwards so I'm just using my um, paper towel to get some of the paint off for, for dry brushing make sure we got enough and then I'm just going to dry brush his weaponry it's picking out the edges nicely. There. Oh, one thing I've also done, which is a personal preference, is I picked out the blade spikes here in yellow. Um, you don't have to, you can keep them uh, metallic, but I kind of tend to give these a bit of a, uh, a dry brush. I don't make these look like the armor. These kind of are going to get end up as a dirty kind of metallic colour so they look like they're part of the weapon rather than part of the armour. Um, I think that's it for him, he's got no chain mail. Let's just do his knife, that's not a knife, that's a knife. There. Now what I like to do a bit is I like to go on the armour panels here and just give that a very light dry brush. Again, personal preference, just picks out the edges, makes them look a bit beaten and worn, but you don't have to. It's like I said, just personal preference. Okay, and that's it. And that's it for, for that for now. I mean, we're going to wash it later. Uh, whilst we're here, I'm going to get some Mechanica Standard Grey, shake that. I'll probably get my medium base brush again, mix it with a bit of water, we're just going to paint 
his trousers grey. Mechanica standard grey. Again, just be careful on the um, when you approach the yellow, but you don't have to be too neat anywhere else. And there he is with the um, Mechanica standard grey and lead belt you're done uh, we're gonna cut do a couple more base coats now and that should hopefully just finish this guy off uh, for terms of base coating so I'm going to use Raycarth flesh on the um, cloth and on any wrapping so on his wrists and weapons and I'm going to use Mornfang brown on any leather so on the straps and boots uh, you could you could probably do the boots in Rhinox hide or Abad and black if you wanted um, but yeah, I'm just going to do that and then I'm just going to pick out a little detail here. I'll probably do that in um, this uh, Stormcast helmet in Liberator Gold. And I'll probably just do a bit of um, spot colour here. So I've got some blue contrast paint. Uh, I think it's Talisar Blue. Yep, Talisar Blue on there. And uh, on the handle here I will use Wildwood contrast paint but again you could use um, Rhinoxide if you wanted so yeah that's quite a few paints but it's not going to take us too long to do it should literally just take a couple of minutes so I'm just going to you know thin it down with a bit of water like I said just do I don't know what you'd call it is long cloth maybe some of them have a chain mail, so you would have done that in the earlier step, but this guy's got a cloth. Okay, that's, uh, that's all the Raycarth flesh done. I've uh, also picked out his uh, fingernails in that. Had a change of heart, and I think I'm going to do his boots in Wildwood contrast, I think, just to break up the colours a bit, and um, I think they'll... The boots are nice and wrinkly, so I think that lends itself lovely to uh, contrast paint. So I'm going to do his boots in Wildwood as well as the shaft of his uh, Gore Hacker. Wildwood's done. So I'm going to take some. Mornfang brown uh, with a small layer brush. I'm just going to pick out all the leather straps on the model. Right, so all the leather bits have been picked out, and I've picked out the stitches on the trousers as well, um, and a bit down here on the boots, um, which are optional, you don't really have to. Just going to quickly finish. Um, his kind of details off with a bit of, as I mentioned earlier, Telesar blue, just as a spot colour. I really like using this blue on their pouches and stuff. Um, just going to take a little bit of Liberator gold and just do this Stormcast helmet on the front. You can see where I've picked out the um, the cords in Mornfang Brown, uh, the threads that hold him up, the string. Right, this step, I'm going to do some pre-highlighting uh, on the trousers. So I'm going to get Dawnstone and thin it down. And normally what I do is I highlight, uh, edge highlight my stuff after I do a wash. But because I think Dawnstone is quite a light grey and I want these trousers to be dark once we're done, I'm going to highlight them before we apply our washes. Um, so that will darken them down but still give them highlights. So I'm just going to pick up all the raised areas 
It's quite, I've thinned it down uh, more than normal, so it should blend with the uh, Mechanica standard grey once it's dry. So we're just going to pretty much paint all the raised areas on his trousers, leaving the recesses where the sh uh, where you think the shade's going to settle. Um, so you can see where it's darker anyway. But yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. You're kind of speculating. People aren't going to be focusing on the trousers too much, but it's nice to do it as best you can. Do the front of the trousers as well. You can see where the light's hitting it, so... That's where I'm going to put my Dawnstone. Right, whilst that's drying, I'm just going to do the mouth now. Uh, some of them have got closed mouths, some have got open mouths. If you've got a closed mouth, what I like to do is um, run a bit of very uh, dilute Rhinox hide uh, in between the teeth. But because our guy here has got an open mouth, I'm going to use Screamer Pink um, to paint the tongue. Again, thinning down my paints. And then... Uh, uh, Zandri dust to cover the uh, base cover the teeth. I'm going to do the tongue first because it's probably going to get on the teeth. If you don't have Screamer Pink, any kind of dark red will be fine. Corn red, you could even get away with them. Um, oops, that was a bit of a mess. That's why we've done it before the teeth. Uh, you could even use ch -ch -ch, even song even Evil Sun Scarlet. Once that's wet, just to help the cover up, I'm going to take a bit of water and just flush that there. So it's going to be easier to cover up if it's a bit thinner. Okay. Right. Zendry dust. And if your model has got any skulls on it, um, maybe on the pommel of, of any swords or daggers, um, or any kind of trinkets, cover them in Zandri dust now. All right, I'm going to wait for that to dry and now is a good time to uh, go back over the model and neat up, neaten up anything because we've done all the base coats now. If you can see any um, of the primer coming through, any spots of white, now is a good time to just go and uh, touch those up and um, I'm going to wait till that screamer pink dries and I'm just going to touch up his face a bit. Okay, so now is a good time before we start applying the washes. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I've neatened up all the uh, bits and pieces that I needed to. Um, sorted out his teeth again. So, yeah, so now uh, is where it starts to get good. I mean, yeah, they're looking okay at the minute, but uh, they could look better. So we're going to uh, apply some washes now. And I've got three here in front of me. What have we got? Null Oil, Agrax Earthshade, and Athonian Camo Shade. So, we're going to give those a good shake. And I'm probably going to apply them with a medium layer brush. Um, just so I can kind of control where they go. So, we're going to use the Athonian Camo Shade. We're going to use the Athonian Camo Shade on all the skin bits. Okay, so I'm going to pop that all over his face. You can see it is starting to bring out all the detail nicely. Push it under there. I'm going to use Null Oil 
on all the metal bits, so his knife edges, knife blades, um, the sword which I've now stuck on. Um, after I painted the, uh, the trousers, I stuck them on. And uh, his trousers, because I, I wanted them to be a bit darker. So I'm going to put null oil on his trousers. And then I'm going to put um, Agrax Earthshade on all the wrappings. Um, so on the weapon and his uh, wrists. And if your guys have got boots, uh, some of those on there. And where else are we doing the Agrax Earthshade? Oh yeah, teeth and mouth, uh, loincloth. Uh, pommels and any kind of skull bits. It's worth remembering that I've also, um, hopefully you've been doing it, but I've been painting the um, the chest plate as we go along. So that this one here has got a bit of Agrax Earthshade to go on. Okay. That is the green done. Next. Agrax Earthshade. So, put that as a skull here. Put all the wrappings in there. If you get too much on there, you can see it's flooded. That's right, just fine. Just pick it off. And move it to another part of the model that you need the uh, Agrax Earth shade on. So we're not doing it on the yellow, okay? Don't touch the yellow with this. Right, and the final bit. And this one you can do, you can use your, uh, or I will use my um, medium shade brush. Because there's quite a lot of cover. Is the Null Oil. I'm just going to get that on nice there. Nice dirty metal look. And then I'm going to cover the, um, remember I said the yellow bits on his weapons. Darken them down so they look like they're part of the weapon. And finally, his trousers. There's knife there. So now you'll see the null oil run into those recesses to darken the trousers down. But the bits that we did uh, Dawnstone earlier should stay a bit lighter. And there we have it. That's him with the. Uh skin all dry now so whilst we've got him I'm gonna take some evil scut sun scarlet and I've got a small layer brush and I am just gonna take a dot and pop it on his eyes Go. The other one, oh, just only noticed, he's scarred. This guy has lost an eye, so I'm going to just grab some. What have I got here? Uh, he's no Cadian flesh tone, that'll do. So I'm going to grab some Cadian flesh tone. Um, I'm just going to make it a bit runny, thin it down a bit. I'm going to try. And pop that in his skull just to make it look a bit kind of fleshy well, it's not really coming out on camera much but well, it looks like too much, but that's okay. And that's all good. 
Uh, I'm going to take some Bone Blade Brown and I'm just going to edge highlight his belt. So I'm going to thin this down. So take some Bone Blade Brown and then just with the edge of my brush. I'm also going to try and get some of the stitches. If you want to be super daring, this is going to get a bit of Corax white. I put a little dot on that red that we did. Guess the final step for this bit. I'm gonna get a bit of Ushapti bone and put it on a dry brush. I have a small dry brush here. I have nicked, let's see. And I'm just gonna dry brush the strappings in the Shapti bone. Oh very nice. So this is actually one of my wife's makeup brushes that I've nicked. It's an angled brush, it seems to work quite well. So anything, uh, all the wrappings, any kind of skull trinkets there. Guess his uh, loincloth here. Can dry brush that. Ushapti bone on his teeth, just to make him look a bit brighter and sharper towards the end. Okay. And... Whilst we're there, I'm going to get some iron breaker. I'm just going to hit the edges of anything metallic, just to give it a sharper kind of feel. Right, so I've put his chest plate back on, um, and now, probably for the f one of the final stages, I've got some Dawn Yellow uh, thinned down, uh, which is it's an edge paint. Uh, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the side of my brush and follow all the sharp edges of the armour. And give all of the armor and edge highlight if you want you can pick out all the studs as well uh, in this paint uh, you can take your time with this because we're nearly at the end the final bit is the most fun bit is doing the yellow armor right at the end so take your time um, just pick out all the sharp edges now, all right, and that's with the edge highlighting done. Um, now it's the kind of final bit, uh, more or less, and my favorite bit of the whole uh, procedure. So thank you for bearing with me. Uh, I know the yellow still looks a bit messy, but this is where it's all gonna come together. So this is a combination that I kind of made up myself that I I like, that I think works for yellow. And it's done with three uh, different paints. So we got a shade, Reichland Flesh Shade, uh, Contrast Medium, and the Contrast Iron and Yellow. And we mix this in a ratio of two to one to one. 
Okay, so ratio of two for contrast medium. So I'm going to do it on the palette one, two blobs there. You can't see it because it's white on white, but you'll see it in a minute. Then I'm going to get one blob off Reichland Flesh Shade. And then one blob of iron and yellow. And I'm going to mix them all up. And you're going to get this orangey brown um, kind of warm sunset. But it's got a hint of brown to it, so it doesn't appear too orange. And it doesn't appear too brown. It's really weird, but I'm kind of lucky that I worked it out. So you're going to take this made up wash that we're going to do and you're just going to push it on the yellow like that and it's going to blend the uh, the dawn yellow into uh, the flash gets yellow as well as provide like natural shading to the armor panels you can see it's probably a bit too much there so we don't want it too heavy yet so you just want it to be nice and thin so it just creeps into the recesses that you can't really see on the armor This is why I wasn't too fussed about being that careful earlier on the tutorial with the yellow um, because this uh, it kind of it covers the imperfections anyway. You can see it's giving it a nice warm sunburst and it's blending in the um, the dawn yellow which was a bit stark to start off with. Hopefully we'll get a nice image here on this nice carapace because it's a bit of a large chunky section yeah you can see it's naturally shading all the yellow and that ratio of two to one to one uh, that's probably enough to do two models so uh, if you're doing these in batches you're not going to be wasting any of the paint you can see we're pretty much there it's just his chest plate and belt to do now and even though all this looks messy with this uh, magic formula it all comes together right at the very end There we go. I'm going to let that dry. Uh, and that's pretty much it if you want to leave it there, apart from basing. Um, I'm going to do one step further and do the black flame patterns after this that you see on the, um, on the box art. So stick with me if you um, want to see that. And we'll be back for that step once this is dry. Now that the shade's dry, you can see it's really brought the model to life. So everything's kind of come together <laughs> in the final few stages. So thanks very much for uh, sticking with me. Right, so uh, the final, final bit, I'm going to take this off uh, the base, is we're going to try and do some freehand flame. So get the thinnest brush you've got, um, put a bit of water in it, and then I used some thin down Abaddon black. And what I tend to do is I've... Um, I start on one side, so I'm going to go on this knee pad here and I'm going to do my flare. I'm going to start in the middle where I want to go <coughs> and then alternate the angle so uh, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to start in the middle. The reason why I start in the middle is if you get it a bit too thick, what you can do is then you can add, you can taper it and thin it out for the end. It's kind of, it's a bit counterintuitive, um, but you just go the opposite way on the top and the bottom then and you can thicken it out at the at the bottom and if that's not tall enough for you you can always add to it so just being a bit thin there we 
we go. And we're going to do another one. Just going to make sure my brush is still wet. Let's do on the other side. So start in the middle again. There you go. And because we kind of started in the middle, if you make any mistakes, you can always fatten it out and send the flame going in whatever direction you want. Whereas I found if I started at the bottom and made a mistake, <clears throat> there was nowhere really left to go. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do some random effects, um, probably do some on uh, maybe his opposite wrist guard and then it's down to basing however you want um, to do it. I base mine with Armageddon Dune so I'm going to do that and then that's the model done. Hooray! And here he is in his orky goodness uh, based and varnished now so I've used Munitorium varnish and I've also applied a bit of blood for the blood god on the weapons um, which if you're going to do make sure you do it after you varnish um, because it's a gloss paint and uh, the varnish will mat it down but yeah there he is all done uh, hopefully it was an interesting tutorial for you it didn't take too long to do I don't know it's probably about an hour hour and a half to get him done um, so let's put him with his unit and he, they are now ready for some smashing and bashing um, so one thing that I've done uh, with the uh, leader dude if I wanted to field these in a squad of 10 um, with my other five brutes who have got the um, the two inch gore hacker weapons I have magnetized the chief's arm here and I have painted uh, another gore hacker so he can go in as a non chief dude um, so we use the chief mop from my other squad of five and now we've got ten brutes uh, two special weapons one chief and seven gore hackers so they can pile in and fight in two ranks so that's it yeah i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh we'll see you guys on the next one catch you later